Okay, I said I want to go ahead on and start telling these prison stories. How y'all doing? Auntie just laying up in the bed at 4.37 in the morning. And I want to start telling these prison stories because I'm telling you. Hope my auntie babies and boogie boogies doing okay. I think I might download this one too today. And then I'm going to try to come back with a live video. But you know the hardest thing that auntie had to do when I had to go do time. You know, I don't know if I should start this story up, up to leading time. Well, I started like this because it's going to be different sections of the prison story. Um, I had messed around and called it drug charges, which I... It wasn't me that who sold the person the drugs. But the person who sold the drugs to the person, they sold the drugs inside of my house. Yes, Auntie was headed to the nightclub to have her a good time. And I let some people come over and stay in my house. And I told them this particular person, make sure you don't sell him no drugs out this house. And I let the people, the person know that that person was wired. I say he's wired. He's working for the police. And please don't sell no drugs about my house. So I goes and I party, have me a good time. You know, I come on back home. They still there. Like I say, you know, I went to prison for somebody else. Somebody who's dear to me. And I know a lot of y'all probably never did nothing like that, but you know, you got to understand me. You got to understand the love that I have for a person. And a few weeks later, they was picking up people. But I wasn't worried because I knew that who was the informer was, and I knew I did not sell to that person. So one of my friends, she came, it was this little spot we called the country. Everybody used to hang out there in the country, you know, just hang out or hustle. Or just, people just didn't work. They just drank and party all the time. They hang out there in the country. And it was like a little bar. The little bar come open up. They buy beer, wine, look all day. That's, that, that's how they was living. <laughs> you know, you don't see some little small towns. That's how people live. They they wake up drinking, they lay down drinking, they go to the jilt joint, they play music all day, they ain't got nothing else to do. Or uh, either smoke dope or use dope or sell dope. You know, one of those things. And I was just sitting there in the yard, you know, on every day hustling. And then one of this girl came through, they called her Bit Steam. She said, Loretta, I said, what? She said, get your ass lead now. She said, they over there. Kicking in your sister, they kicking in so and so doors. I don't want to say people because they might not want me, you know, be in my stories because they don't change their life. They're not living like that no more. So we'll just say Rebecca Doe's. They over there kicking in Rebecca Doe's. <clears throat> I say, what? Me and Rebecca was real close. She said, get your ass from out of here now. So I. I took off. I went to my, my parents old, old, owned a couple of properties out there. And one of the properties they wasn't living in, but the house was still there. So I rode around to the old property and I took all the stuff I had. And I set it underneath the house like in a big old hole or something. And I came back. I said, well, let me go on over here to Rebecca House. So I went over there to Rebecca House, and the whole SWAT team was there. I mean, they, as soon as they seen me, they dragged me. I said, what y'all driving me for? They say we have a one out for your arrest for sales and possession of a cocaine. I say, I ain't never sold no cocaine. I ain't never sold no cocaine. But anyway, they took us to jail. 
They put my bond at a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, y'all. A hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Cause these people thought we were some notorious big drug dealers, you know, that we had a lot of money. And so all of us went to jail. We was just talking amongst ourselves, you know, how we was gonna get out. Cause I want to know, should I let my parents them know where my money at? Cause they didn't know I had a few dollars snatched away. Plus my daddy was keeping money from me cause I used to give him money every day to put up for me. Just to hold on in case I get in some type of trouble. So, but you know, my, I, like I say, I had a praying mother. My mother always prayed about her children. Even if she knew we was out there doing wrong, she didn't accept it, she didn't like it, but she still prayed for us. And you know how you just lie to your mama. I ain't doing nothing, they doing it for me and all this. You know how you just tell lies to your mom because you don't want mom to know what you really doing. So anyway, the judge came along and he lowered all our bonds. He, he said, this is ridiculous. They got y'all in here with these high bonds. I'ma lower all of them. And they didn't like that. He lowered them down to like, I think mine was like 1500 It took $150 to get me out. Then the ones who had like more than one case, like Rebecca, she had quite a few cases. She had three. And I think it might have took her like four, or five, I don't know, 500 to get out. I think it was like 3000 might have took her 300 to get out, so on and so on. And we went to jail with Haitians, you know, because they say we was working for the Haitians and all this and stuff like that. But, you know, the Haitians were crying because they knew they probably was going to get deported. You know, I didn't share now till that day. I didn't because I was in jail month. friends, <laughs> you know. That made me feel strong. Now, if I had went by myself, I probably would have been crying that day. I should have shed some tears. Cause... But I knew I never sold to an undercover, so I wasn't worried about that, you know. So we get out. Of, they burn us out of jail. I have to go see the lawyer and stuff. And I'm telling the lawyer that I didn't sell the drugs. He said, well, the drugs were sold at your house. And he said, I listened to the um, recording. The person who was talking is definitely not you. But they sound so close to you. And I know it's probably Rebecca. Because he know me and Rebecca was real close. Say so the only thing they're going to do is take that charge and put it on her. And she most definitely is facing prison time because she got three counts of sales in possession and possession. I said, oh, my God. Oh, I can't do this. And I went and talked to Rebecca about it, and I cussed her out. I said, because I told you, do not sell to that damn man at my house. Do not sell to him. He's the damn undercover. And she did it anyway. <laughs> yeah, she did it fuck any goddamn way. And I say, and I told you, you were running from your goddamn husband. I let you stay the night there with your boyfriend. And I told you, do not sell drugs in my damn house. So anyway, as it went on, you know, we had to go to court. Uh, I mean, she had started changing her life. She has started living differently, and you know. But we end up in in the court, you know, going to court, and I was just. He say, "Well, I'm gonna tell you what they're gonna do, Miss Brown. You just go ahead on the um, you can just go ahead on and take this damn two years house arrest." And um, I say house arrest. I can't do no damn house arrest. He said, well, you can take this two two years house arrest. I say, for two whole years? They got to tell me to go and come? He said, yep, for two whole years.
During that time, I was real wild, y'all. Ain't no way in hell I could have did house arrest. Okay, I end up on house arrest. They was on house arrest because auntie wasn't on a goddamn thing. <laughs> Believe me, they was the ones on house arrest. They was trying to figure out how they was going to arrest me. <laughs> yeah, baby. Auntie wasn't on no damn house arrest. They was. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this story right here right now. And I'm going to hit y'all up a little later with some more. So I'm going to start in the prison, starting to tell the prison stories. All right, and let me know how you're enjoying it. All right, Auntie Babies and Boogie Boogies, and y'all have a marvelous day. And I'll see y'all soon. Bye. Don't get nothing on you. Auntie in the dark. <laughs>